What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. I hope you all have had a great Thursday so far. Very active weather ongoing right now. I'm not going to really talk on that much because um, I'm not even really to go live and keep you all up to date through the next couple hours. But there is a tornado. I'm looking at my radar script right now. There is a tornado, couple tornado warning still ongoing getting into New Jersey right now. It's a pretty big deal. These um, have been confirmed tornadoes. There's been there's probably going to be some damaging uh, photos and videos that definitely come out here in the next couple hours here in New Jersey and eastern areas of Pennsylvania. So uh, definitely uh, thoughts and prayers go out to them because it definitely does look like this has impacted some um, heavily populated areas. So I hope that there's no fatalities. Um, we can rebuild things, but we can't um, get back live. So definitely uh, praying for them guys up there. But um, in this video, we're really going to break down what looks to be a major pattern change going into next week for almost the entire eastern U.S. And, you know, it's been so hot, right? You know, it is what's an absolute scorcher here in South Carolina today. We didn't have our pop-up showers and storms here just locally in South Carolina. So uh, it was very, very hot, very, very hot. Um, tomorrow looks to be our first day where we hit 100 degrees here in certain areas of the southeast. And we're going to talk about that very briefly. And then we're going to talk about the abrupt pattern change as we get into early next week. Um, and really talk about how cool can it get? Can it be like a fall cool down for some folks? Is it going to be, um, what kind of cool down are we talking about basically? So um, if, before we get deep into this, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. Uh, like the video if you like it. It helps get the video out there. Um, weather is kind of slow right now in the grand scheme of things. Of course, you have the active severe weather going on right now. But um, normally this is kind of a slower time of the year between what's going on with just afternoon showers and storms and then the hurricane season that's beginning to ramp up. We're going to talk about that when we get into the weekend. I'm starting to see signs that uh, the main developing region is really starting to uh, get going here So uh, here in the next couple of weeks. So hurricane season is really about to ramp up here. I really think it is here in the next couple of weeks. But um, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'll upload content every day, and uh, I'll quit rambling here, and let's talk about the weather. So um, here we go. So I'm going to start off by just mentioning this tomorrow across the southeast. I'm just showing the southeast, southern sections. Very hot day. Humidity is going to be insane. Um, heat indexes are going to get above 110 degrees, especially in areas here in the Carolinas. Uh, Columbia to Augusta, I really think, is going to be some hot spots for sure. Um, I know here at my house, I think it hit 97, 98 degrees here in Lexington, South Carolina. If you don't know what that is, it's basically um, just west of Columbia, South Carolina. That is where I live. But check it out. This is um, big time heat, nasty heat, and it's happening in the most... Uh, hottest time of the year, really. So it's not super uncommon. We normally, on average, hit 100 degrees pretty often. Um, but uh, if you see any movement in the background, it's my daughter. She's watching her phone in the background. But um, it's going to be very hot, very, very hot. So, um, so flipping from what looks to be like a major pattern change, check it out. The 6 to 10 day outlook, this is running from August 4th to August 8th. That is a decent chance of below normal temperatures for the entire eastern U.S., especially the Mid-South, the Southeast, um, a decent chance to be below normal in this time frame. You look at the um, the 8 to 14 day range, it still looks cooler than normal here, August 6th through the 12th. So it's definitely looking like it's going to be cooler than average for this section of the country and the southern areas. So what kind of cool air are we talking about? Um, that is the question. Is this going to be like an early kind of taste of fall, or is it going to be kind of just like cloud cover preventing temperatures from raising very high. So we're going to talk about who's going to get that taste of fall and who's not. But check it out. Temperature, temperatures compared to average. That is an anomaly. So this is basically temperatures compared to average at this time of the year. you got the uh, blues, the purples. That is much below average. you got the obviously the warmer colors like the oranges and reds. That's above average temperatures. So moving forward, if you don't know where we're at, um, check out right here. This is what day we're at. Let's get this going. We're getting into Saturday. It's still going to be above normal temperatures in the extreme southeast. But check out the cooler air in the northeast. There's going to be two rounds. The first round is going to move mainly just for the northeast and areas of the mid-Atlantic. Um, this is going to root through the, go come through the weekend. It's, going to, uh, it's not going to be cool by any means, but it's going to be a lot more comfortable for the northeast and a lot more lower dew points, which I'm about to show you here in a second. But as we get into this to early next week, Check it out. You have a more substantial and more southern driven, uh, colder than, well, cooler than average temperatures uh, moving deep into the south. I mean, check out this for Tuesday, 
um, a Tuesday afternoon. This is well below average. This is 10 to 15 degrees below average here in Virginia and North Carolina. And um, I can, I'm going to show you why it looks kind of weird. You're, you're saying, well, why isn't it below average down here? And it's well below average over here, and it's all over the place. I'm going to tell you why here in a second. Check it out. As we're getting into Wednesday, it, um, it stays like that. So it's well below average on Wednesday. It's well below average on Thursday. And it just it looks like a not a cool week, but it's below average. Remember, below average for this time of the year is still hot, especially in the southeast. It really is. It's still uncomfortable. Um, but I want to mention something. This is going to be a cold front moving through. Um, for if, for the people in the southeast, when you look at your weather apps, because we all do it, e even, even as a weather enthusiast, when I tell people, don't look at your... We, we call them weather crab apps, you know, because they're just, they're bogus, they're terrible. People look at them and, and just look at them as if they're gospel. They look at the hourly forecast for the next day at 6 p.m. and it shows a thunderstorm icon. I think it's going to be thunderstorming at exactly 6 p.m. That's not how it works, but that's how most people understand it to work. But anyways, here we go. Get off my soapbox there. We get into the weekend. What happens here is you get a cold front that drapes kind of like this right here. But it kind of stalls out over here. And what happens is storm systems ride the jet stream, kind of like in winter. So you get a moist flow that basically rides the jet stream through here. And because the front stalls out, we're on that wet, moist side of the front, basically on the jet stream, right where the systems are moving through or right just south of it. Um, when you're well, well south of it, sometimes you can get a severe weather threat, but that, that's not the case. So what, what this means is, yes, it's going to be cooler than normal, but this is getting into Tuesday. This is getting into Wednesday. Look at all the green you're seeing in the southeast. What this means is, is basically the temperatures are cooler than average, but they're cooler than average because of cloud cover, rain, and storms, which means you're going to wake up, it's cloudy, it's going to be kind of rainy, not an all-day rain, but you're going to get like tropical downpours. So what I'm saying is it's going to be below average, but it's still going to be humid. So it's going to be like highs in the 80s. Um, but dew point still in the low 70s. So the air temperature is going to feel cooler. It's not going to be like today where it was air temperatures in the mid 90s and it was insanely humid. It's going to be temperatures in the 80s, kind of overcast, the cloudy, the rainy conditions. And, um, and basically it's just still going to be humid. Now this is for the southeast. For up here in the mid-Atlantic and northeast, you could potentially have a, just a, a phenomenal weekend. For sure, where you get don't really get impacted by rain. But check it out. We're getting into Thursday of next week around this time. There, there's going to be basically a decent chance of rain every day next week for the southeast. And I really think a flood threat is going to be introduced. Now, this is gonna this is gonna become more talked about for next week for an extremely rainy pattern um, as we get into the weekend. I really think it is. But this is dew points. Check this out. Dew points are a great indicator in trying to figure out where a cooler air mass is. And moving forward, check out this push of dry air. When you got dew points in the 50s, 40s, and 30s, that is dry air. That is almost like that crisp fall-like air that punches through the northeast. And uh, we start to get this. When we start to get later in August, really, you start to see more and more jets in the uh, dips in the jet stream as you start to get a little closer to fall and the changing of the seasons. But that first little push moves through. But then we watch this little push right here. See these dew points in the 50s going all the way into the upper south regions? That's not super dry air, but that's nice, comfortable air it's getting all the way into Louisiana, Alabama, North Georgia. Um, but check it out here. Check out the moist flow here in uh, southern areas of Alabama, most of Georgia and South Carolina and the Carolinas. Um, you're stuck on that humid side, but it's still cooler than average, but it's still rainy and humid and just nasty. Um, that This punch of dry air isn't quite as, uncomfortable, quite as comfortable as that first um, this weekend for the Northeast, but it's still nice for the Northeast, that's for sure. It moves through and uh, just kind of remains humid. Now, um, we'll take a look at kind of how this trough is digging here as we get into uh, next week. And check it out. What's going to be happening is you're going to have storm systems riding this uh, jet stream, riding the trough, uh, riding the cold front. And it's just gonna, we're going to be on this moist flow right here. We're just going to have tropical downpours. Um, I really think next week for a large portion of the southeast, but not everybody. Um, as far as how these temperatures are going to respond to this cold front, 
But check it out. This is Friday morning. Look at the nice, cool air getting into the northeast, crisp air for this time of the year. Um, it really gets even deeper into the area. Check it out. Check out the low temperatures into Pennsylvania. This is just off the operational GFS. This is low temperatures for the, look at New York. The almost, uh, obviously, New York City won't get this cold, but large portion of New York State, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, areas of Massachusetts, especially the higher elevations, can get downright chilly um, for our last morning of July. Um, this is going to be a, some nice, crisp air crisp, almost fall-like air for a large area of um, the northeast, sick to high temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Um, but check out the southeast, still scorching. Um, you get into next week, and this is when temperatures start to cool off a little bit. But uh, check it out. This is rain-cooled air, I'm trying to tell you the temperatures are only going to be in the 60s and 70s for highs on August 3rd in North Carolina, Virginia. So you know, you, you look at this, this is cooler than normal, but it's it's still warm. Um, and check it out. Check out the uh, rainfall potential. This is the GFS, the GFS Ensembles. Um, this is just showing you the rainfall potential all the way through. Let's see, let's go all the way out through uh, basically the beginning of next week. Chances for several inches of rain as you have low pressures to really get going here and storm systems that fly off, off the southeast coast. Um, this almost looks like something you would see in the winter. Um, but for sure, it's definitely something we need to watch out for. I think it's going to be an interesting pattern, especially for flooding. And then for areas, other areas of the southeast and just the mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley, it's going to be a nice little cool down. So um, definitely an uh, interesting pattern to watch next week. Uh, we also start to, I really think next week, we're going to figure out a lot about the tropics. Um, so, But that's all I got for tonight, guys. Um, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, y'all stay safe out there if you're being affected by nasty storms in the mid-Atlantic and northeast this, uh, this evening and tonight. Y'all have a good one.